أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغلوب عليهم ولا الضالين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ياسين والقرآن الحكيم إنك لمن المرسلين على صراط مستقيم تنزيل العزيز الرحيم لتنذر قوما ما أنذر آباؤهم فهم غافلون لقد حق القول على أكثرهم فهم لا يؤمنون إنا جعلنا في أعناقهم أغلالا فهي إلى الأذقان فهم مكمحون وجعلنا من بين أيديهم سدا ومن خلفهم سدا فأغشيناهم فهم لا يبسرون وسواء عليهم أأنذرتهم أم لم تنذرهم لا يؤمنون إنما تنذر من اتبع الذكر وخشي الرحمن بالغيب فبشره بمغفرة وأجر كريم إنا نحن نحيي الموتى ونكتب ما قدموا وآثارهم وكل شيء أحصيناه في إمام مبين واضرب لهم مثلا أصحاب القرية إذ جاءها المرسلون إذ أرسلنا إليه مثنين فكذبوهما فعززنا بثالث فقالوا إنا إليكم مرسلون قالوا ما أنتم إلا بشر مثلنا وما أنزل الرحمن من شيء إن أنتم إلا تكذبون قالوا ربنا يعلم إنا إليكم لمرسلون وما علينا إلا البلاغ المبين قالوا إنا تطيرنا بكم لئن لم تنتهوا لنرجمنكم وليمسنكم منا عذاب أليم قالوا طائركم معكم أئن ذكرتم بل أنتم قوم مسرفون وجاء من أقصى المدينة رجل يسعى قال يا قوم اتبعوا المرسلين اتبعوا من لا يسألكم أجرا وهم مهتدون وما لي لا أعبد الذي فطرني وإليه ترجعون أأتخذ من دونه آلهة إن يردني الرحمن بضر لا تغني عني شفاعتهم شيئا ولا ينقذون إني إذا لفي ضلال مبين إني آمنت بربكم فاسمعون قيل دخل الجنة قال يا ليت قومي يعلمون بما غفر لي ربي وجعلني من المكرمين 
وما أنزلنا على قومه من بعده من جند من السماء وما كنا منزلين إن كانت إلا صيحة واحدة فإذا هم خامدون يا حسرة على العباد ما يأتيهم من رسول إلا كانوا به يستهزئون ألم يروا كم أهلكنا قبلهم من الكرون أنهم إليهم لا يرجعون وإن كل لما جميع لدينا محضرون وآية لهم الأرض الميتة أحييناها وأخرجنا منها حبا فمنه يأكلون وجعلنا فيها جنات من نخيل وأعناب وفجرنا فيها من العيون ليأكلوا من ثمره وما عملته أيديهم أفلا يشكرون سبحان الذي خلق الأزواج كلها مما تنبت الأرض ومن أنفسهم ومما لا يعلمون وآية لهم الليل نسلخ منه النهار فإذا هم مظلمون والشمس تجري لمستقر لها ذلك تقدير العزيز العليم والقمر قدرناه منازل حتى عاد كالعرجون القديم للشمس ينبغي لها أن تدرك القمر ولا الليل سابق النهار وكل في فلك يسبحون وآية لهم أنا حملنا ذريتهم في الفلك المشحون وخلقنا لهم من مثله ما يركبون وإن نشأ نغرقهم فلا صريخ لهم ولا هم ينقذون إلا رحمة منا ومتاعا إلى حين وإذا قيل لهم اتقوا ما بين أيديكم وما خلفكم لعلكم ترحمون وما تأتيهم من آية من آيات ربهم إلا كانوا عنها معرضين وإذا قيل لهم أنفقوا مما رزقكم الله قال الذين كفروا للذين آمنوا أنطعم من لو يشاء الله أطعمه إن أنتم إلا في ضلال مبين ويقولون متى هذا الوعد إن كنتم صادقين ما ينذرون إلا صيحة واحدة تأخذهم وهم يخصمون فلا يستطيعون توسية ولا إلى أهلهم يرجعون ونفخ في السور فإذا هم من الأجداث إلى ربهم ينسلون قالوا يا ويلنا من بعثنا من مرقدنا هذا ما وعد الرحمن وصدق المرسلون إن كانت إلا صيحة واحدة فإذا هم جميع لدينا محضرون فاليوم لا تظلم نفس شيئا ولا تجزون إلا ما كنتم تعملون إن أصحاب الجنة اليوم في شغل فاكهون هم وأزواجهم في ظلال على الأرائك متكئون لهم فيها فاكهة ولهم ما يدعون سلام 
قولا من رب رحيم وامتاز اليوم أيها المجرمون ألم أعهد إليكم يا بني آدم ألا تعبدوا الشيطان إنه لكم عدو مبين وأن يعبدوني هذا صراط مستقيم ولقد أضل منكم جبلا كثيرا أفلم تكونوا تعقلون هذه جهنم التي كنتم توعدون إصلوها اليوم بما كنتم تكفلون اليوم نختم على أفواههم وتكلمنا أيديهم وتشهد أرجلهم بما كانوا يكسبون ولو نشاء لطمسنا على أعينهم فاستبقوا الصراط فأنا يبسرون ولو نشاء لمسخناهم على مكانتهم فما استطاعوا مضيا ولا يرجعون ومن نعمره ننكسه في الخلق أفلا يعقلون وما علمناه الشعر وما ينبغي له إن هو إلا ذكر وقرآن مبين لينذر من كان حيا ويحق القول على الكافرين أولم يروا أنا خلقنا لهم مما عملت أيدينا أنعاما فهم لها مالكون وذللناها لهم فمنها ركوبهم ومنها يأكلون ولهم فيها منافع ومشارب أفلا يشكرون واتخذوا من دون الله آلهة لعلهم ينكرون صرون لا يستطيعون نصرهم وهم لهم جند محضرون فلا يحزنك قولهم إن نعلم ما يسرون وما يعلنون أولم يرى الإنسان أن خلقناه من نطفة فإذا هو خصيم مبين وضرب لنا مثلا ونسي خلقه قال من يحيي العظام وهي رميم قل يحييها الذي أنشأها أول مرة وهو بكل خلق عليم الذي جعل لكم من الشجر الأخضر نارا فإذا أنتم منه توقدون أوليس الذي خلق السماوات والأرض بقادر على أن يخلق مثلهم بلى وهو الخلاق العليم إنما أمره إذا أراد شيئا أن يقول له كن فيكون فسبحان الذي بيده ملكوت كل شيء وإليه ترجعون صدق الله العظيم اللهم آمين أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إنا كنا من الظالمين إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما بقدر عظمة ذاتك في كل وقت وحيم 
اللهم إنا نحتفظك ونستودعك أدياننا وأبداننا وأنفسنا وأهلنا وأولادنا وأولادنا وأموالنا وكل شيء أعطيتنا اللهم اجعلنا وإياهم في كنفك وأمانك وعياذك من كل شيطان مريد وجبار عنيد وذي بغي وذي حسد ومن شر كل ذي شر إنك على كل شيء قدير اللهم جملنا بالعافية والسلام وحققنا بالتقوى والاستقامة وأعذنا من موجبات الندامة إنك سميع الدعاء اللهم اغفر لنا ولوالدينا وأولادنا ومشايخنا وأصحابنا وإخواننا في الدين ولمن أحبنا فيك ولمن أحسن إلينا والمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين وصل اللهم على عبدك ورسولك سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وارزقنا كمال المتابعة له ظاهرا وباتنا في عافية وسلامة برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين يا الله يا الله يا الله ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وأدخلنا الجنة مع الأبرار يا عزيز يا غفار يا رب العالمين ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم وصلى الله تعالى على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه يجمعين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله سيدنا محمد رسول الله اللهم آمين 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 أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وما تقدموا لأنفسكم من خير تجدوه عند الله هو خيرا وأعظم أجرا واستغفروا الله إن الله غفور رحيم أستغفر الله 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 
استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله العظيم الذي لا اله الا هو الحي القيوم واتوب اليه إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم 
اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما بقدر عظمة ذاتك في كل وقت وحين فاعلم أنه لا إله إلا الله 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 سيدنا محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد 
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الذين قال لهم الناس إن الناس قد جمعوا لكم فاخشوهم فزادهم إيمانا وقالوا حسبنا الله ونعم الوكيل 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 فانقلبوا بنعمة من الله وفضل لم يمسسهم سوء 
واتبعوا رضوان الله والله ذو فضل عظيم اللهم يا لطيف التف بنا فيما جرت به المقادير اللهم يا لطيف التف بنا فيما جرت به المقادير اللهم يا لطيف التف بنا فيما جرت به المقادير وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا علي يا عظيم يا حليم يا عليم انت ربي وعلمك حسبي فنعم الرب ربي ونعم الحسب حسبي تنصر من تشاء وانت العزيز الرحيم نسالك العصمه في الحركات والسكنات والكلمات والارادات والخطرات من الشكوك والذنون والأوهام الساترة للقلوب عن مطالعة الغيوب فقد ابتلي المؤمنون وزلزلوا زلزالا شديدا وإذ يقول المنافقون والذين في قلوبهم مرض ما وعدنا الله ورسوله إلا غرورا فثبتنا وانصرنا وسخر لنا هذا البحر كما سخرت البحر لموسى وسخرت النار لإبراهيم وسخرت الجبال والحديد لداود وسخرت الريح والشياطين والجن لسليمان وسخر لنا كل بحر هو لك في الأرض والسماء والملك والملكوت وبحر الدنيا وبحر الآخرة وسخر لنا كل شيء يا من بيده ملكوت كل شيء كاف ها يا عين صاد كاف ها يا عين صاد كاف ها يا عين صاد انصرنا فإنك خير الناصرين وافتح لنا فإنك خير الفاتحين واغفر لنا فإنك خير الغافرين وارحمنا فإنك خير الراحمين وارزقنا فإنك خير الرازقين واهدنا ونجنا من القوم الظالمين وهب لنا ريحا طيبة كما هي في علمك وانشرها علينا من خزائن رحمتك واحملنا بها حمل الكرامة مع السلامة والعافية في الدين والدنيا والآخرة إنك على كل شيء قدير اللهم يسر لنا أمورنا 
مع الراحة لقلوبنا وأبداننا والسلامة والعافية في دنيانا وديننا وكن لنا صاحبا في سفرنا وخليفة في أهلنا واطمس على وجوه أعدائنا وامسخهم على مكانتهم فلا يستطيعون المضيء ولا المجيء إلينا ولو نشاء لطمسنا على أعينهم فاستبقوا الصراط فأنا يبسرون ولو نشاء لمسخناهم على مكانتهم فما استطاعوا مضيا ولا يرجعون ياسين والقرآن الحكيم إنك لمن المرسلين على صراط مستقيم تنزيل العزيز الرحيم لتنذر قوما ما أنذر آباؤهم فهم غافلون لقد حق القول على أكثرهم فهم لا يؤمنون إنا جعلنا في أعناقهم أغلالا فهي إلى الأذقان فهم مكمحون وجعلنا من بين أيديهم سدا ومن خلفهم سدا فأغشيناهم فهم لا يبسرون شاهت الوجوه شاهت الوجوه شاهت الوجوه وعنت الوجوه للحي القيوم وقد خاب من حمل ظلما طاسين حاميم عين قاف مرج البحرين يلتقيان بينهما برزخ لا يبغيان حاميم 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 هم الأمر وجاء النصر فعلينا لا ينصرون حاميم تنزيل الكتاب من الله العزيز العليم غافر الذنب وقابل الطوب شديد العقاب ذي الطول لا إله إلا هو إليه المصير بسم الله بابنا تبارك حيطاننا ياسين سقفنا كاف ها يا عين صاد كفايتنا حاميم عين سين قاف حمايتنا فسيكفيكهم الله وهو السميع العليم فسيكفيكهم الله وهو السميع العليم فسيكفيكهم الله وهو السميع العليم ستر العرش مسبول علينا 
وعين الله ناظرة إلينا بحول الله لا يقدر علينا والله من ورائهم محيط بل هو قرآن مجيد في لوح محفوظ فالله خير حافظا وهو أرحم الراحمين فالله خير حافظا وهو أرحم الراحمين فالله خير حافظا وهو أرحم الراحمين إن ولي الله الذي نزل الكتاب وهو يتولى الصالحين إن ولي الله الذي نزل الكتاب وهو يتولى الصالحين إن ولي الله الذي نزل الكتاب وهو يتولى الصالحين حسبي الله لا إله إلا هو عليه توكلت وهو رب العرش العظيم حسبي الله لا إله إلا هو عليه توكلت وهو رب العرش العظيم حسبي الله لا إله إلا هو عليه توكلت وهو رب العرش العظيم بسم الله الذي لا يضر مع اسمه شيء في الأرض ولا في السماء وهو السميع العليم بسم الله الذي لا يضر مع اسمه شيء في الأرض ولا في السماء وهو السميع العليم بسم الله الذي لا يضر مع اسمه شيء في الأرض ولا في السماء وهو السميع العليم أعوذ بكلمات الله التامات من شر ما خلق أعوذ بكلمات الله التامات من شر ما خلق أعوذ بكلمات الله التامات من شر ما خلق ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم بسم الله والحمد لله رب العالمين أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الله لطيف بعباده يرزق من يشاء وهو القوي العزيز يا لطيف 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 يا لط
latif ya 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 Latif, 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 Ya Ultuf bina ya latif ya alim ya khabir Ya latifan bi khalqihi ya aliman bi khalqihi ya khabiran bi khalqihi Ultuf bina ya latif ya alim ya khabir يا لطيفا بخلقه يا عليما بخلقه يا خبيرا بخلقه ألطف بنا يا لطيف يا عليم يا خبير اللهم يا من لطفت في خلق السماوات والأرض ولطفت بالأجنة في بتون أمهاتها ألطف بنا لطفا يليك بكرمك ورحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين يا الله اللهم يا من جعلت الصلاة على النبي من القربات نتقرب إليك بكل صلاة سلنيت عليه من أول النشأة إلى ما لا نهاية من الكمالات بسم الله ما شاء الله لا يسوق الخير إلا الله بسم الله ما شاء الله لا يصرف السوء إلا الله بسم الله ما شاء الله وما بكم من نعمة فمن الله بسم الله ما شاء الله لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله بسم الله ما شاء الله لا يسوق الخير إلا الله بسم الله ما شاء الله لا يصرف السوء إلا الله بسم الله ما شاء الله وما بكم من نعمة فمن الله بسم الله ما شاء الله لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله بسم الله ما شاء الله لا يسوق الخير إلا الله بسم الله ما شاء الله لا يصرف السوء إلا الله بسم الله ما شاء الله وما بكم من نعمة فمن الله بسم الله ما شاء الله لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل صلاة كاملة وسلم سلاما تاما على سيدنا محمد الذي تنحل به العقد وتنفرج به الكرب وتقضى به الحوائج وتنال به الرغائب وحسن الخواتيم ويستسقى الغمام بوجهه الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه في كل لمحة ونفس بعدد كل معلوم لك 
اللهم صل صلاة كاملة وسلم سلاما تاما على سيدنا محمد الذي تنحل به العقد وتنفرج به الكرب وتقضى به الحوائج وتنال به الرغائب وحسن الخواتيم ويستسقى الغمام بوجهه الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه في كل لمحة ونفس بعدد كل معلوم لك اللهم صل صلاة كاملة وسلم سلاما تاما على سيدنا محمد الذي تنحل به العقد وتنفرج به الكرب وتقضى به الحوائج وتنال به الرغائب وحسن الخواتيم ويستسقى الغمام بوجهه الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه في كل لمحة ونفس بعدد كل معلوم لك اللهم صل صلاة كاملة وسلم سلاما تاما على سيدنا محمد الذي تنحل به العقد وتنفرج به الكرب وتقضى به الحوائج وتنال به الرغائب وحسن الخواتيم ويستسقى الغمام بوجهه الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه في كل لمحة ونفس بعدد كل معلوم لك اللهم صل صلاة كاملة وسلم سلاما تاما على سيدنا محمد الذي تنحل به العقد وتنفرج به الكرب وتقضى به الحوائج وتنال به الرغائب وحسن الخواتيم ويستسقى الغمام بوجهه الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه في كل لمحة ونفس بعدد كل معلوم لك اللهم صل صلاة كاملة وسلم سلاما تاما على سيدنا محمد الذي تنحل به العقد وتنفرج به الكرب وتقضى به الحوائج وتنال به الرغائب وحسن الخواتيم ويستسقى الغمام بوجهه الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه في كل لمحة ونفس بعدد كل معلوم لك إن شاء الله نكتنيو الذكر جامعة لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله في كل لمحة ونفس عدد ما وسعاه علم الله لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله في كل لمحة ونفس عدد ما وسعاه علم الله لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله في كل لمحة ونفس عدد ما وسعاه علم الله لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله في كل لمحة ونفس عدد ما وسعاه علم الله لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله في كل لمحة ونفس عدد ما وسعاه علم الله لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله في كل لمحة ونفس عدد ما وسعاه علم الله لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله في كل لمحة ونفس عدد ما 
وسيعه علم الله إن شاء الله ميك دعانا اللهم آمين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما بركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we pray for our Shaykh, teacher, merchant, and master, Sayyidina Shaykh Faisal Hamid Abdul Razak. O oh Allah, may you increase him in knowledge and wisdom. O oh Allah, may you protect him from evil, and we pray that he will lead his marines on the straight path towards you. O oh Allah, we pray for the Shaykh and his family. We pray that you strengthen them in Iman, keep them in good health, and grant them long life in Islam. O oh Allah, we pray that you protect them from all evil, ease their trials, and grant them the sweetness of paradise. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa qina adhab al-nar. Allah forgive us for our sins and guide us on the straight path leading to paradise. O oh Allah, you know the needs of all of us present here. O oh Allah, answer our dawn and take care of our needs. O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we pray for our parents that you grant them your grace and mercy as they raised us in childhood. O oh, oh Allah, grant our parents long life and good health in Islam. O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, forgive our parents and grant them paradise. O oh Allah, for our parents who have passed away and returned to you, O oh Allah, we beg you to forgive them. O oh Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, we pray for all the marines of Shaykh Faisal throughout the world. O oh Allah, we pray that you ease our trials and, us, and grant us the strength to face our trials. O oh Allah, make it easy for us to gain true knowledge and to practice it, to be good marines and to get ever closer to you. O oh Allah, you know the needs of all of the marines. O oh Allah, we beg you to answer our, our dua and take care of our needs. O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we pray for all the Muslims around the world. O oh Allah, we pray that you strengthen us in Iman. O oh Allah, we pray for unity and to make us stronger as a nation. O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, please comfort and relieve all Muslims who are suffering and have suffered losses. O oh Allah, you are the all-powerful and the almighty. O oh Allah, we beg you to give us victory against the unbelievers. O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we pray for the International Islamic Forum and the Al-Fasr and Dhikr Halaqa. May you make it easy for us to establish many messages for your sake. May you bless the Islamic form and then fasten the dhikr halakha to be a beacon of to be a beacon of light for Islam throughout the world. And may you help us to finish building the new message soon and make it easy for us to do so. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammadan wa ala alihi wa ashabihi yajma'in. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun wa salamun ala al-mursani walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله سيدنا محمد رسول الله الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله والله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله والله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله والله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله والله أكبر الله 
Allahu Akbar Walillahil hamd Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar La ilaha illa Allah Wallahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Walillahil hamd Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar La ilaha illa Allah Wallahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Walillahil hamd Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar La ilaha illa Allah Wallahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Walillahil hamd Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar La ilaha illa Allah Wallahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Walillahil hamd Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar La ilaha illa Allah Wallahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Walillahil hamd Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar La ilaha illa Allah Wallahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Walillahil hamd Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar La ilaha illa Allah Wallahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Walillahil hamd Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar La ilaha illa Allah Wallahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Walillahil hamd Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar La ilaha illa Allah Wallahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Walillahil hamd Allahu Akbar Allahu Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar La ilaha illa Allah Wallahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Walillahil hamd Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar La ilaha illa Allah Wallahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Walillahil hamd Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar La ilaha illa Allah Wallahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Walillahil hamd أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمد عبد الله ورسوله اللهم افتع علينا فتوح العارفين ووفقنا توفيق الصالحين وانفعنا اللهم بالقرآن والذكر الحكيم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا من فضلك علما وتعليما يقربنا منك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم لا سهل إلا ما جعلته سهلا وأنت يا حي يا قيوم تجعل الحزن إذا شئت سهلا سهلا 
اللهم أعزنا من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا وأصلح لنا شأننا كله لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم وصلى الله تعالى على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين آمين آمين أما بعد My dear respected brothers and sisters, my dear Murids, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu. May the peace and blessings of God Almighty be with each and every one of you. And welcome once again to our special program. This is our daily broadcast uh, coming to you from the Islamic Forum of Canada starting at 7 p.m. Uh, every day. Uh, we welcome you to our program. We thank you for tuning in to our broadcast today. We hope you can join us every day at 7 p.m. Toronto time or Eastern time. We kindly request you to reach out to others and tell them about this program. Uh, your family members, your relatives, your friends, uh, other Muslims you know. Tell them about the program, invite them to watch the program. Inshallah, they'll benefit from the program and you will re receive increased blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We also kindly request you to enter your information in the chat, um, your name and city where you're from, and your updates for the three ongoing projects, the Gratitude Project, the Salawat Project, and the Quran Project. We also want to recognize uh, our sponsors for the dinner program today and all those that have sponsored the dinner program for this program. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them, inshallah. And also our donors, we want to uh, thank them and make special to offer them for, the, for supporting us financially, supporting the Islamic Forum and making generous donations to the Islamic Forum. All those who donated today, yesterday and before. Uh, we pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all our donors, bless their families, bless their loved ones, answer all their dua, enrich them many more times than what they donate to the Islamic Forum. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase them in his sustenance, in his risk because of their donation to the Islamic Forum of Canada. We also want to make special dua for all those who requested dua, there are several. Uh, brothers and sisters and families that have requested du'a, we include all of them in du'a uh, for our program today. And all those who enter their information in the chat, uh, we make special du'a for them. And for each and every one of you, we make special du'a for each and every one of you. Whatever du'a you want to make, please uh, keep that knee in your heart and we make du'a, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, accept uh, your du'a. And I also want to include my entire family in dua, my wife, my children, uh, my sisters and my siblings and their family, uh, my entire family, and especially my mom and my dad. Make special dua for them, and I kind of request you to remember them in your dua, if possible, inshallah. We also want to mention that for this program, our concern is your safety, your well-being your security, your afiyah, uh, and firstly, and, and secondly, uh, your spirituality, your connection uh, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, your closeness with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we want to direct you on that path to achieve that objective of more closeness, greater closeness and nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to the Prophet sallallahu your spirituality. Those are two important concerns for our program. And uh, I also want to mention that uh, to this end, uh, we have several things that we mention every day, the action items we to do and the lectures that we do uh, to help you to achieve the, uh, this important objective, your safety and well-being and your spirituality. We, we've also prepared for you, the uh, admin staff, the staff here at the Islam Forum, prepared especially for you 
some special video uh, lectures, video clips. There's a series series that we have prepared for you uh, about the life history of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then there is what another series called the Editor's Pick. These are spe special short videos for you, for your, your enjoyment, for your benefit, for to increase in knowledge and get closer to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And we are always preparing uh, more information for you, for your benefit. All of this free of charge, only for you to benefit from inshallah. And if you would like to receive uh, these uh, special video clips and video series, please uh, send us your email address to the email address we use for this program, sheikhfaisal at gmail.com. And also your WhatsApp number, if you have a WhatsApp number, so we can put you on the WhatsApp list. Uh, and especially the email list. This is the most frequent way of communicating with you and sending you all of this information. So do send us your email address so you can receive the special uh, video series, the editor's pick, the serial series, and other series that we are preparing for your benefit, inshallah. Today I also want to say something uh, specifically about one of our projects, the Infaq project, of the importance of spending in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To, to share with you some reflections on some of the verses in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about the importance of spending in the cause of Allah. I share with you first a beautiful hadith uh, from Sayyidina Abu Dhar al-Ghifari radiallahu anhu. This noble companion, uh, Sayyidina Abu Dhar radiallahu anhu, he had a, a unique habit uh, that he would do and the Sahabas would notice this. And they, they they asked him about it. And this habit was that after each and every salah, fard salah, five times a day in Masjid al Nabawi in Medina, after each salah, he would give some sadaqah. Each fard salah. So that he's doing it five times a day after the five daily salah Fajr, Dhuhr, Asir, Maghrib, Isha. He's giving him some sadaqah, finding some poor person, someone in need, giving them. And he, he wasn't a wealthy person by no means. There were other sahabs that were much more wealthier than him. But he had uh, this uh, beautiful habit that he would do. And sometimes it may just be uh, a small, something small he's giving us sadaqah, sharing some dates with some, with, uh, some of the other uh, companions who were in need and so on. But he would engage in sadaqah regularly after each salah. Uh, five times a day. And so uh, some of the companions the sahabs ask him why he's doing that. Why every day after each and every salah they notice that he's giving sadaqah. He's doing charity. Uh, and they ask him about it. He said, do you not read the book of Allah? The Quran. Uh, and he says that every time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us to pray, he always commands us to uh, give charity. And when you look at the Quran, you see uh, this is true. It's a, it's, a, it's a statement of fact. That wherever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, aqimu salah, and establish prayer, He's always following it up, وَأَتُ zakat and give zakat. Zakat uh, in, the, in the generic sense, meaning all forms of charity. Uh, so, he did, immediately after uh, the command of Salah, in the same verse or the next verse, it's there, it's connected, always, throughout the Qur'an. Allah SWT is telling us to pray, commanding us to pray, and He's telling, commanding us to uh, give charity. And so he, say, he said that's why He's doing it. After each and every Salah, five daily Salah He's doing it. He took this uh, command literally, and He's doing it. And so he had this beautiful practice that the Sahabas uh, also followed as much as they could, as best as they could. Uh, Sayyidina Abu Dhar al ghifari I wanted to share this with you so that you can develop this habit, bearing in mind what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed to us in the Qur'an about uh, establishing prayer, the command, wa qimu salah establish prayer, the command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wa atu zakat, and give charity. This is how 
uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has this beautiful command in the Quran. Then at the very beginning of the Quran, Surah Al-Baqarah, after Surah Al-Fatiha, Surah Al-Baqarah, the very beginning, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala establishes the importance of spending in the way of Allah. In fact, fi sabilillah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals Alif la meem Thalika al kitabu la rayba fi hudal lil muttaqeen So two important concepts are mentioned here. This is the book Thalika al kitabu la rayba fi This is a book in which there is no doubt. There, is no, there, there are no doubts. There, there are no uh, mistakes. There are no inaccuracies in this book in the Quran. This is a perfect book, without any mistakes. And, and this is a unique book, uh, the Quran. No other book you would see that happening, e even a book today. Uh, and the, the author would not see, uh, I'm writing this book now, and I guarantee there are no mistakes in this book. Because the moment he does that, people start looking for mistakes in that book. That's the first thing they're doing, searching for mistakes and finding it, and then telling him or publishing it, there are mistakes in the book. Your, your, your claim is a fake claim. That, that's what they would say. And so the Meccans, the people in Mecca, the Quraysh, uh, they did this actually. They were looking at the book and trying to find faults in the book, trying to produce something like it. Challenge, uh, respond to the challenges in the Quran, and they could never do that. They could never do that. So the first thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala establishes about this book, the, in this book, there are no mistakes, no doubts, no inaccuracies, no ambiguities, nothing like that. It's a perfect book. The most perfect book ever in all of creation. The book of Allah. And then he says, Huda lil muttaqeen. And it is guidance for those who fear Allah, for those who are conscious of Allah, for those who are mindful of their duties to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For the believer, the believers, you're mindful of duty, duties to Allah. Who is it that would benefit from this book Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us right at the very beginning huda lil muttaqin this book even it's a perfect book the perfect book of guidance that will give you success in this life and in the hereafter but not everyone will benefit from this book Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us it is guidance it will benefit certain people with certain characteristics and he tells us muttaqin People of Taqwa. And then the last one explain who they are. Alladina yu'minuna bil ghaib. Those who believe in the unseen. In meaning what Allah SWT has revealed. That they believe everything that Allah SWT has revealed even though they cannot see it. Because usually normal human behavior is that they, people want to see something in order to believe it. They claim this. If they see it, they'll believe it. But sometimes, if the heart, if the heart is diseased, that they, even when they see it, they would not believe it. And this happened to the unbelievers. Allah SWT mentions this in the Quran. Even when they saw the truth, they would not believe it. But Allah SWT says, those who will benefit from the Quran, they believe in the unseen. وَيُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةِ And they establish prayer. They establish prayer. وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ and they spend of what we have bestowed upon them. Look again here, right, right at the very beginning. They establish prayer, and then immediately followed by the, the command or the description of spending in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And from what we've given them, they spend for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So those are the people now that will benefit from the guidance in the Quran. They spend in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you don't know how that guidance will come to you. How that benefit will come to you. Because this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when you spend in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you his guidance, will bless you with his guidance. You, you'll find see that you start to understand this Quran more and uh, your inner thoughts are guided and are purified and you're motivated to do good things. You're granted the tawfiq to do good things. There, there are many people who uh, may want to do good things, but they don't get wrong to doing it. And then others 
are guided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that they are able to do good things for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, and, and, and so uh, in this, this ayah, Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 1 to 5, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is establishing this important principle for us. Who are the ones, who are the people that will be, will be blessed or will benefit from the guidance of the Qur'an? Who will be guided by this Qur'an? Huda lil muttaqin. Among the, their characteristics is that they spend in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa mimma razaqunahum yunfikun. Yet again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, also in Surah Al-Baqarah, ayah number 177, a special ayah. This ayah is called Ayatul Birr. Ayatul Birr. Chapter 2, verse 177. There, there are some ayahs in Quran that have a, a title. The most famous one is Ayatul Kursi that you all know. Uh, chapter 2, uh, verse 255. Surah Al-Baqarah 255. Right? Uh, that, that's one example. This is another example. Ayatul Bir, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains what is not Bir and what is Bir. And Bir is the pinnacle of the good qualities of the believers. Like the believers have good qualities. The Muslimun, Mu'minun, Muttaqun, Qanitun, Sabirun, and so on. The pinnacle of that is Bir, to have Bir. Al-Abrar. And here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this ayat al-bir 177 states, لَيْسَ الْبِرَّ أَن تُوَلُّوا وُجُوهَكُمْ قِبَلَ الْمَشْرِقِ وَالْمَغْرِبِ وَلَكِنَّ الْبِرَّ مَنْ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَلَكِنَّ الْبِرَّ مَنْ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَالْمَلَائِكَةِ وَالْكِتَابِ وَالنَّبِيِّينَ وَآتَ الْمَالَ عَلَى حُبِّهِ ذَوِي الْقُرْبَى وَالْيَتَامَى وَالْمَسَاكِينَ وَابْنَ السَّبِيلِ وَالسَّائِلِينَ وَفِي الرِّقَابِ وَأَقَامَ الصَّلَاةَ وَآتَ الزَّكَاةَ وَالْمُوفُونَ بِعَهْدِهِمْ إِذَا عَاهَدُوا وَالصَّابِرِينَ فِي الْبَأْسَاءِ وَالضَّرَّاءِ وَحِينَ الْبَأْسِ أُولَئِكَ الَّذِينَ صَدَقُوا وَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْمُتَّقُونَ So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, it is not righteousness or beer that you turn your faces to the east or west, the directions and so on that you turn, meaning your outward deportment, uh, how you are outwardly. That is not really your true righteousness or beer. But it is righteousness to believe in Allah and the last day and the angels and the book and the messengers and to spend of your sustenance. So Allah SWT mentions what is truly beer. Start with our carnal iman, the things that we believe in, the, the necessary essential articles of faith. And then immediately to spend of what you own, what Allah SWT has uh, blessed you with. Out of love for Him, for Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa atal mala ala hubbihi. That you love Allah SWT, you spend. Of what, Allah, of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted to you. You give charity, you give sadaqah, you do infaq, fi sabilillah. So that is bir, that is righteousness. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the categories of people, people who are in need, uh, that you should, uh, you should spend on and good causes and so on. So this is an important characteristic of the believer. Here, how is beer described by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What are the characteristics for someone who can achieve the pinnacle of the good qualities of the believer? Beer. They spend out of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to them because of the law for Allah. So it's an indication of the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to spend in the way of Allah. It's, it's indicative of your law for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is something that we should be mindful of. 
truly uh, spending in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a great characteristic to have that brings you great benefits in the dunya and in the hereafter. And in the hereafter, day of judgment, there are people who would beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send them back into the dunya. They would beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send them back into the dunya. To do what? So that they would engage in sadaqah. They would spend in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When they, when they see now the, the rita, the, 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 the covers are taken away from them, they can see reality in the hereafter. وَبَصُرُكَ الْيَوْمَ hadid That in the hereafter, see things clearly, to see the benefit of spending in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they said they wish they could have done more of that. So they beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, send me back into the dunya. Let me live another life so that I can spend in your way. So th this, this, these are great qualities that we should strive to inculcate and at every opportunity strive to spend in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and grant us tawfiq so that we can spend in His way and He can grant us the great success of the dunya and especially the great success of the akhirah in genital firdaus. Ameen, ameen, ameen. And now we would listen to our special lecture for today. Bismillahi Rahmani Rahim wa salatu wa salam wa ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in amma ba'd. I want to share with you today this wonderful opportunity to gain much blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentions in the hadith, ma naqasa malu abdin min sadaqa. The wealth of a person will never decrease because of spending in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning that your wealth will increase when you spend in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you engage in infaq fi sabilillah. Your wealth will increase. And so the opportunity for you to increase your wealth greatly by spending in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The opportunity I want to share with you is uh, for our live stream broadcast, this broadcast that you who have been watching, uh, many of you every day, many of you several times a week, uh, the, the daily broadcast we have at 7 p.m., the Juma broadcast at 1 p.m. on Fridays, uh, the special programs, the special maulids, halakas, uh, and so on. So many different programs we have, and many people are benefiting from this program, as you know, many brothers and sisters like yourselves, families from many different countries are benefiting from the live stream broadcast. And we need to acquire new equipment and to update our equipment we have that we are using for the live stream broadcast. And there are several items we need. And the first one I want to share with you today and to appeal to you for this, it's the camera. We need to get a new camera, and the budget for the camera is six thousand uh, dollars. The our, our wonderful staff here at Islam Forum they've done their research uh, in this matter, and so we need to acquire that camera, uh, and the cost is six thousand dollars. And we hope you can uh, donate towards uh, this project. We've divided that amount into shares of a hundred dollars, and so you can donate one share of $100 or five shares which is $500 or 10 shares which is $1,000 or more, whatever you can afford and whatever blessings you would like to receive from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To make your donation, uh, you can go to our website, Islam Forum website at islamicforumonline.com and then on the donation page uh, you would see uh, one of the buttons for the different categories of donation labeled live stream equipment. It is the second button in the list of uh, categories for donation. So you click on that button, live stream equipment, and you would make your donations for this specific uh, cause that we are appealing to you for. Uh, we, we hope you can respond and respond generously uh, immediately by donating as many shares as you can 
each share being $100, and the total amount we would like to raise for the camera is $6,000. This is the first item we need, and there are several items. We would let you know once we collect the money for the camera, we would go on to the next item, and we let you know the details about that. So uh, do respond, and respond generously, and may Allah SWT bless you. Once again, the Prophet ﷺ says, ما نقص مال من صدقة. The, the wealth of a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never decreases because they spend in the way of Allah. Their wealth will only increase. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them increase in their wealth. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless your entire family and all your loved ones because of your financial support for the Islamic forum. Ameen. Wa sallallahu ta'ala ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'i. أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمد عبد الله ورسوله اللهم افتح علينا فتوح العارفين ووفقنا توفيق الصالحين وانفعنا اللهم بالقرآن والذكر الحكيم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا من فضلك علما وتعليما يقربنا منك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم لا سهل إلا ما جعلته سهلا وأنت يا حي يا قيوم تجعل الحزن إذا شئت سهلا سهلا اللهم أعزنا من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا وأصلح لنا شأننا كله لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم وصلى الله تعالى على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين آمين آمين أما بعد My dear respected brothers and sisters I greet you all with the greetings of Islam Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu May the peace and blessings of God Almighty be with each and every one of you and welcome once again to our special series of lectures on the actions which grant you the rewards of Hajj. Things that you can do that will help you to attain the rewards of Hajj even if you do not perform Hajj. Things that are mentioned by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so in this beautiful series we've mentioned many points so far of different things that you can do that would help you to attain the rewards of performing Hajj. I continue from where we left off in our previous lectures. Uh, for uh, the, the eighth point in this series, uh, which is uh, reported by Al Imam Ibn Rajab, who reported that the or narrated the companion, the Sahaba, Sayyidina Miknaf ibn Sulaim, radiallahu anhu. He said that the reward for attending Eid al-Fitr prayer is equal to the reward of performing Umrah. And the reward of attending the Eid al-Adha prayer is equal to the reward of performing Hajj. And this is in, mentioned in the Lataif al-Ma'arif. And so here, the blessings of the two Eid Salah. That you perform Eid al-Fitr Salah, then you get the blessings of performing Umrah, the lesser Hajj, the lesser pilgrimage. And if you perform Eid al-Adha Salah, you get the blessings of performing Hajj. This is a great bounty 
from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the believers that we are able to achieve the rewards of Umrah and Hajj by doing something that we are required to do in any case. That we have to perform our Eid Salah, the two annual Eids, every year Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha. But in doing so, we're getting great blessings, rewards of performing Umrah, rewards of performing Hajj. And this, this is a wonderful encouragement and motivation and inspiration from the Prophet ﷺ so that the Muslim Ummah will be committed to performing the Eid Salah, Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha. Great blessings and benefit for us. The, the Eid is this annual day of the year for the believers. The annual day of the year for the believers. It is the day of Islam, these two Eids. Beautiful are the manifestations of the, the different symbols of Islam on these occasions. And from among the noticeable, observable sha'air on these days, it's the takbirat that you should recite on uh, the days of Eid and uh, days leading up to that and days after that, that you should be reciting the takbirat as the uh, noble companions, for example, Sayyidina Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu uh, and other companions would uh, walk in the streets of Medina and this is now 14 centuries ago in Medina in their time, the time of the Sahabas. Yes, they would walk in the streets of Medina and they'd be reciting takbirat and they'd be encouraging everyone to recite takbirat with them. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah. Wallahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Walillahi alhamd to recite this as, as much as you can. So we encourage you to do this uh, in this special time and to make arrangements to attend the Eid Salah. You should find out uh, when is Eid, whether it's Eid al-Fitr, Eid al-Adha, you contact Islamic Forum for this information, send us an email or call us uh, in this way, contact us and uh, we would uh, let you know this, this so you can uh, Prepare for the day of Eid, whether it is Eid al-Fidr or Eid al-Adha. And so that you can perform the Eid Salah. The Prophet ﷺ used to encourage the entire community of believers in Medina to uh, perform the Eid Salah, to come over the Eid Salah. And they would uh, go beyond the boundaries of the Masjid, what the Masjid is now... Uh, beyond its, its boundaries, uh, there was a special place, the Eid Maidan, uh, the place where Eid uh, was uh, performed. Uh, and this is now just beyond the borders of the masjid now. If, you, if you're standing up just facing Qibla inside the masjid uh, and to your right side, to the corner of the boundary as you leave the masjid and you go beyond the, the fence of the masjid, that is the area where the Eid Maidan was. So it's, it's not too far, it's walking distance uh, next to Masjid al ghamama Masjid al ghamama the Masjid of the Clouds in that area. Those of you who have gone to Medina, if you go to Medina, you will see this. Uh, and it's called Masjid al ghamama Masjid of the Clouds, because uh, on, on one occasion, and there are several occasions like this, uh, the Prophet ﷺ was there and a cloud hovered above him in the, mid, in the hot sun and to shade him, uh, shade him from, from the heat of the sun. And so the masjid is established there. Uh, it's called Masjid al-Qamam. So next to that, it's the Eid Maidan. Uh, Maidan al-Eid, the place uh, of Eid prayer, where they would, uh, they, they would not pray the Eid in Masjid al-Nabawi. They would go out. Uh, and pray together. And so the Prophet ﷺ would encourage everyone 
the entire community in Medina, men, women, children, everyone. This is the beauty of the Eid. Look at what the Prophet ﷺ, how he organized it, what he did so that it is, it is something that the entire community must be involved in. And so I want each one of you to do this. Uh, you, your community, meaning your circle of acquaintances, your family members, your relatives, your friends and other Muslims you know, those four categories. You get them to participate in the Eid program. The Eid Salah, let's say for Eid al-Adha, that uh, they, they would either come to the Islamic Forum if they're within commuting distance, or uh, follow us online so you can pray with us. You're part of this uh, community of believers together. So the, the Prophet Ali Wasallam would encourage everyone to come out for the Eid prayer. Men, women, children, including also, this is interesting, the women who could not pray because of their monthly cycle. They could not pray, but he would still allow them to come to the place of the Eid prayer. They would not pray, but they would listen to the khutbah of the Prophet because this is the annual message of the Prophet that he's telling them the significance of the occasion itself and then what are the implications for the Muslim community. So uh, the, the attendance, the participation in the Eid prayer is very extremely important. And so the Prophet ﷺ mentioned this great bounty from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the authority of the Sahabi, the, the noble companion Sayyidina Miknaf ibn Sulaim. That the, the, when you perform your, the Eid, uh, Eid al-Fitr prayer, it's like the, you get the blessings of Umrah, as if you perform Umrah. So many of you, many people may not have performed Umrah before, never had the opportunity to do so. The majority, the overwhelming majority of the Ummah did not perform uh, Umrah nor Hajj. A small minority are those that are blessed to do so. But even if you haven't done it, you can get the rewards of doing it. Yes, get the rewards of doing it. Umrah for Eid al-Fitr and then for Eid al-Adha, the, the, the great Eid, the Eid al-Akbar, it is the reward of Hajj. In addition to many other benefits and blessings of doing so. So I want you to commit yourself to the Eid program, the Eid Salah, that you, you make all necessary arrangements and efforts to be there, never to miss it. And encourage your family, your children, uh, siblings, parents, spouses, and so on, to, to go with you. Make the arrangements from before. Don't wait until, until the morning of E to make the arrangements. Well in advance, what you're going to wear, transportation arrangements, food arrangements, uh, and so on. Uh, if you have to make arrangements at the place of prayer, taking a prayer mat, and so on, you make, discuss all these things with the family before, make your plan, put your plan in place. So on the day of Eid now, you are so very happy. And recite your takbirat and do all the different sunnahs of Eid. Prophet said, uh, the great blessings you receive from the Eid, attending the Eid Salah, the Eid program. Remember the Salah is include, inclusive of the ritual prayer, the two rakat, wajib Salah, as well as the khutbah. Because the Prophet says, al khutbah to min salah The khutbah is part of the prayer like for Juma and other uh, khutbahs. It's part of the prayer because there are some Muslims who don't give any importance to the khutbah. They just uh, plan their time to, uh, on the average, you know, when the Imam would do the Salah, they come in then and immediately after they leave. It, it's as if they're so uncomfortable being in the masjid, the house of Allah. And you shouldn't be like that. That you, as soon as you get into the masjid, you want to run out of the masjid. No, you want to spend more time in the house of Allah. You are the guest of Allah in his house, in his masjid. And then he honors his guest, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by granting them great blessings. So be mindful about that. You know, they're, they're, they're unnecessary distractions people engage in when they come to the masjid. You know, sometimes you, you see some of the brothers, like we can see them because I'm delivering the khutbah from the member. I see everyone in front of me. They, they come into masjids, sometimes they come in late and they sit down and 
within 30 seconds they're looking at your, your watch. You know, how time is it? Then an, a 30, another 30 seconds go by, they're looking at the watch again. And they keep doing it. It's as if the more often they look at the watch, the faster the time would go by. They're so uncomfortable being in a masjid. No, you shouldn't be like this. You should, you should embrace this blessing from Allah SWT that He has guided you and make it possible for you to be in His house, to be His guest. The masjid is Baytu Allah, the house of Allah. And then you have some others, they come in and as soon as they sit down, they're looking at a phone. They're checking messages. Why do you want to do that? You're worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why do you want to check your phone? Nullifying your Jum'ah. Nullifying your Eid Salah, whatever other Salah you're doing. Because during the khutbah you're checking your messages on your phone. You turn off your phone and put it away. In this way. So you're not distracted by shaitan. So you have, we have to be careful. We have to develop good adab. Develop good adab. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all to be men and women of adab. We, our adab should be immaculate. And the scholars have mentioned that you, your adab is like a lifeboat. If you go on it, you will be saved. You know, think about a ship, a huge ship, Titanic, sinking. If you stay on the ship, then you go down with the ship. But if you get on the lifeboat and you, you paddle away, you sail away, you're safe. The big, powerful ship sinks, but you are saved. Adab is like that in your life. Adab protects you. Adab elevates you. Adab saves you from destruction. So, so, so you want to strive to develop our adab more and more and more all the time. Improve our adab with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa with our sheikh, with our parents, our family, with the Muslim community, with the Muslim ummah at large, and with all of humanity. Always be a person of adab. Yes, this etiquette and manners that we must have. So the, the Prophet Ali is the greatest of those who display adab throughout the history of humankind. The Prophet is the best of those who showed adab and he taught us how to do it. And so for the Eid, he teaches us as well. And so attending the Eid Salah is a way for you to receive these great blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Umrah for Eid al-Fitr, Hajj for Eid al-Adha. Point number nine, going to the masjid for congregational salah, for the five fard salah. In the hadith that's reported by Imam Abu Dawood in his sunnah, the Prophet alayhi salatu said, whoever performs ablution wudu in his home, and then goes out to perform the obligatory, the fard prayer in the masjid, has the reward similar to the reward of a hajj pilgrim. And whoever goes out to perform the mid-morning prayer, salat al-duha, has a reward similar or equal to the reward of one performing umrah in this way. So, among the great blessings now of performing the five fard salah is that you get the rewards of hajj and then another another important point mentioned in this hadith is about salat al duha salat al duha that if you perform salat al duha this is a mid morning prayer after the sun is fully risen until before dhuhr that mid morning time usually between 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. In, in most places, but you would check your time from uh, sunrise, sunrise time to shuruk time to dhuhr time, uh, that beginning time. So the middle time there is it's time for the mid-morning prayer salat al-duha that you should try to do, inshallah. The Prophet Ali would always do this. 
So you get the rewards of performing Umrah for Salat duha and perform rewards of Hajj for performing to go into the Masjid to perform the five daily prayer. Point number 10 says, performing Salatul Jumu'ah. So the noble companion Sayyidina Sa'id ibn al-Musayyib radiallahu anhu, he said, performing the Friday prayer is more beloved to me than a nafil or supererogatory hajj, nafil hajj. So the nafil hajj is a hajj you do after your fard hajj. Once you reach the level where you have the means to perform uh, hajj, As your Prophet said, man is tata ilayhi sabila. Uh, you, you have the means to perform hajj. Then it becomes compulsory on you, wajib, obligatory, obligatory on you to perform hajj. But once you finish that first hajj, that, that becomes your wajib hajj. That's you required to do. If you do another hajj, it's like an optional hajj, a nafil hajj. So that's the difference I want to mention. So the Prophet alayhi sallallahu says that Performing the Juma prayer, Friday prayer, is more beloved to me. Sorry, this is from the report of Sayyidina Sa'id ibn al Musayyib. Sayyidina Sa'id, Sa'id ibn al Musayyib said, Performing the Juma prayer is more beloved to me than a nafil or optional hajj. So the importance now of Juma. Performing Juma salah. Many are the great. The virtues of Jumu'ah, the importance of Jumu'ah, and the consequences of missing Jumu'ah are mentioned in the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. Jumu'ah is the weekly symbol for us, the public observable symbol of the Muslim ummah, the Muslim community. It's the Friday Jumu'ah more than anything else. So you don't want to miss Jumu'ah. And in the time of the Prophet ﷺ, not only men would attend, but men and women and children and the elderly, they're there for Jumu'ah. The entire community would come out for Jumu'ah. So you want to try to do that. Attend Jumu'ah. And you get great blessings. All the things we've mentioned about different Salah, it applies to Jumu'ah as well. The Salah you do in a masjid. The angels wait at the door to welcome you on the day of Jumu'ah. And they would record the, the first person who comes for Juma, the second person who comes, the third person, and so on. And they get the rewards of the first person as if they do kurbani, sacrifice, slaughter of a camel, second person cow, third person sheep, and so on. Like this. Great are the rewards. Until the Imam ascends the member to, to deliver the khutbah, then they, the angels close their book of records and they come and they join the Saf. To join the Saf in the Masjid to listen to the Khutbah. So uh, you don't want to come late for Jumu'ah because you'll miss that blessing from the angels and the angels welcome you. You should try to come before the Adhan if possible. Try to plan your time. Then you sit down after that, you do your Sunnah and so on. And then you can recite your Quran, Surah Al-Kahf especially because that's what you, you, the Sunnah to recite on Jumu'ah, Surah Al-Kahf. Uh, and then much dhikr, weird alam and the other dhikr, you can do much dua. Uh, Jum is a time when dua is accepted. And you remember that you're getting this reward of hajj by attending Jum'ah. So you want to include this niya. Why are you coming to the masjid? Why are you coming for Jum'ah? All of this, not to pray Jum'ah of course, but then the other things that we mentioned now and before in this series that you can do those things. And, and may Allah SWT bless you the rewards of Hajj. The next point, point number 11, it's Umrah in Ramadan is equivalent to Hajj. So if you have or get the opportunity to do Umrah in Ramadan, you grab hold of it, do it, because it's like the rewards of Hajj. In the Hadith, uh, which is mentioned by both Imam Bukhari and Imam Muslim, so it's muttafaqun alayhi, and it's also recorded in Mishkat, a famous, beautiful collection of hadith of the Prophet An Ibn Abbasin kala, kala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, 
in umrata fi ramadan ta'dilu hajjan that umrah in ramadan is equivalent to the rewards of hajj and the the actions in ramadan and this is from the bounty bounties of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the actions in ramadan are multiplied in rewards multiplied in rewards the good deeds you do in ramadan is rewarded like a fard deed in a time other than ramadan and the fard action you do in ramadan is rewarded like 70 fard actions you do in a time other than ramadan so in Ramadan, the bounties of Allah SWT are such that the rewards for the good deeds you do are multiplied by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And so the Umrah in Ramadan equivalent to Hajj in that way. In that way, beautiful. The 12th point I want to share with you today. To take care of the needs of someone so that they can perform Hajj. To take care of all the needs of someone so that they can perform Hajj. In other words, someone, for example, they cannot afford to go for Hajj, but they would like to go for Hajj. You know the person, they're very pious, very religious person. And you have the means to finance them for this journey, to pay for all their expenses. Then you do that and you get the rewards of Hajj. So you pay for that person to go and perform Hajj. Their, all their expenses, their travel, hotel accommodation, their stay in Saudi Arabia, in the Holy City and so on. All the expenses you take care of. And you send them for Hajj, to perform Hajj. They get the blessings and you also get the blessings of performing Hajj. To take care of all the needs of someone. Man jahaza hajan falahu mithru ajrihi. In the hadith which is reported by Imam Ibn Khuzaymah in his Sahih and Imam An Nasa'i in his Sahih. This is a Sahih hadith because uh, the collection of Ibn Khuzaymah is called Sahih because he, he used the same conditions like Imam Bukhari and Imam Muslim to collect, to gather hadith of the Prophet. And Zayd ibn Khalid al Juhani called call Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Man jahaza ghaziyan. Man jahaza ghaziyan. Aw jahaza hajan. Aw khalafahu fi ahlihi. Fi ahlihi. Or fattara sa'iman. Falahu mithlu ajrihi. Min ghayri an yun qasa min ajrihi shay'an. In this beautiful hadith, the Prophet Ali says that if you take care of the needs of different people to do different things, then you get the rewards of that good deeds. And the person will also get the rewards as well. So the one who is engaging in jihad for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who is performing hajj, the, or if you uh, give iftar for the fasting person, this is also mentioned in the hadith. Or fattara sa'iman. So you're getting the, the rewards of this good deed as if you did it yourself. You didn't do it, but you took care of them. You paid all the expenses and so on and so forth, everything for them to do that good deed, like hajj. You, you took care of all the expenses of the person, all their needs. And even while they, they are away, you took care of their responsibilities, then you get the rewards of Hajj. Such a, a great opportunity to do good deeds, especially for wealthy persons or those who can afford it. If you can afford to send someone for Hajj, rather than you going for Hajj, you send someone, it's very good. If you've done your, your uh, wajib Hajj, your obligatory compulsory Hajj already, then, and you have the opportunity to go for Hajj again, maybe you send someone instead, pay for that person to go. It's the same money that you have to spend, but that person will get the rewards. And imagine you send that person for Hajj, how much dua they would make for you while they're there. Because they'll remember you, you're the one who paid you know, thousands of dollars, you know, so much money for them to go for Hajj. They could never afford it. They, and so they would never be able to go for Hajj, but you send them. Think about the blessings you'll get. 
in this way. You get blessings of Hajj and much more because that person will be making so much sincere to offer you. It's a, it's a great opportunity indeed. The 13th point I want to share with you today, it is whoever sincerely intends to perform Hajj but is unable to do so will get the reward of Hajj. Subhanallah. Look at the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That a person wants to go for Hajj and they make their sincere niyyah. That, ya Allah, I want to go for Hajj. I would love to go for Hajj. And sometimes they're not able to go. They can afford it like this. But something happened. They're not able to go. You never know. And, and when you're in those situations, then you realize you know, how true it is that the, the invitation comes only from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, if you sincerely intend to go for Hajj, but you didn't get to go, unable to do so, you get the reward of Hajj. Man nawa al-Hajj bi-sidqin wa lam yastati' al-Hajj falahu ajrul Hajj. So, this is based now on the famous hadith uh, where Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab, the hadith says, An Umara, Umar ibn al-Khattab, radiallahu anhu, kala, kala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, innama al-a'amalu bin niyyati wa innama likul, likul imri'im ma nawa faman kanat Hijratuhu ilallahi wa rasulihi fa hijratuhu ilallahi wa rasulih wa man kanat hijratuhu ila dunya yusibuha aw imra'atin yankihuha fa hijratuhu ila ma hajara ilayhi The beautiful hadith of Niyya. Imam Bukhari begins his collection of Sahih hadith with this hadith of Niyya. Even though the first chapter has nothing to do with Niyyah, it's about the beginning of Revelation. But he begins his book with this hadith. So important it is. And many of the great scholars of Islam have done so. They began their famous works with this hadith of the Prophet about Niyyah. He says, actions are judged by intentions, the Prophet is saying. Actions are judged by intentions. And to each one is granted the rewards of his intention. Well, well, and then the Prophet made the example, give examples of Hijra and so on. So here, uh, the Prophet Ali Sallallahu is giving us bushra, glad tidings, that if you have sincere niyyah to do something, you get the rewards of, of doing that thing, even if you're not able to do so. Yes. So you always want to have beautiful niyyah. You, you, in your heart, you want to do so many good things for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you try to do as many of them as you can. This is how you should be always wanting to do good deeds. And you finish doing a good deed, throw it behind your back and do the next good deed. Like for example, the khatm of Qur'an. You want to strive to finish your khatm of Qur'an. But when you finish it, you don't stop there. When you finish it, immediately you, you recite Surah Fatiha and the first five, five verses of Surah Al-Baqarah. That your knee is that you want to do another khatam again. You get more blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in this beautiful hadith, the Prophet Ali is telling us that actions are judged by intentions. And to each one is rewarded based on their intention. So if, if, in this particular case now, if you intend to perform Hajj, you have the sincere need that you really want to perform Hajj, but for some reason you don't get to do it, you will get the rewards of performing Hajj. Yes, but be that near, the sincere need, you always want to have sincere, pure near in your heart. Remove all the wrong things, evil intentions, remove all of that from your heart. Remove greed and malice, Envy and so on. Remove all of it. Put love in your heart. Mahabba. Start with love of Allah SWT, love of the Prophet وسلم, and it leads to love of everything. Yes. Niyyah. Proper niyyah, sincere niyyah to perform hajj will grant you the rewards of hajj. 
The 14th point I want to mention today, it is visiting Masjid Kuba. Visit Masjid Kuba in Medina. This is, this is the first masjid that the Prophet ﷺ established on his journey of Hijra. For the Hijra, he left Mecca, he went to Medina. But he spent a lot of time on the outskirts of Medina before entering the city. In fact, he spent more time on the outskirts of Medina than he spent with the entire trip from Mecca to Medina. Stopped at Kuba. He spent three days there. Built a masjid and prayed. Masjid Kuba, first masjid he established. And then he talked about the virtues of this masjid. It's important that we understand the way of the Prophet ﷺ. He stopped at Kuba, spent three days there, and he established a masjid. He did not establish something else. He did not, he did not establish a, a business and uh, some other institution or so on. He established a masjid. Shows you the importance of the masjid. When he left there and he continued on towards Medina, and it was on a Friday and he stopped at a place and performed Jumu'ah, established a masjid. It's called Masjid al-Jumu'ah, still in Medina now. When you, when you leave Masjid Nabawi, on the opposite side, on, on your right side, when you're facing Qibla, on the right side at the front of the Masjid, Maidan al-Eid, Masjid al -Gamam. On the other side, to your left side, across from the Masjid, beyond the fence of the Masjid, Wangri, there's Al-Baqi, the cemetery. And in front of that now, in front of that, there is what's called Masjid Bilal, named after Sayyidina Bilal, Sukul Bilal, this Bilal marketplace. And then you continue there uh, onwards uh, to uh, Masjid al Jumu'ah. Ah. Masjid, Masjid al Jumu'ah, ah, the Jumu'ah Masjid, where the Prophet Safan prayed Jumu'ah, established a Masjid there once again. Masjid is still there 14 centuries after. Masjid Kuba, we talk about that. Prophet stayed there, established Masjid, prayed there. And he said, whoever comes to this Masjid, and performs two rakat in this masjid, they get the rewards of Umrah. Yes, just a two rakat performed in Masjid Kuba. Prophet honored this place tremendously because it was the first masjid he established and it has great history. It has great history, Masjid Kuba, that if you get the chance, that you are able to go to Masjid Kuba when you go to Medina. It's one of the places that you must visit. There are certain very important places in Medina. Masjid Kuba is one of them. Uhud is another place to visit Sayyidina Hamza, Sayyidina Shuhada, the master and leader of the martyrs of Islam. He was martyred at the Battle of Uhud and is buried there. So on, these special places, Masjid al Qibla time. Yeah, that you, you go when you're in Medina because the, the, the beautiful, sweet history of Islam is in Medina. When Islam flourished after the hijrah of the Prophet ﷺ. And many of the places of where it, Islam was challenged as well by the Quraysh and the unbelievers that they came to, to kill the Muslims and, and destroy Islam, exterminate the Muslims. Uhud, Badr, uh, Khandak and these different uh, occasions and battles, yes. But the Prophet Ali was triumphant. The Muslims were triumphant. They gained great victory. So it's beautiful being in Medina. And the most beautiful reason is to be with the most beautiful creation of Allah. The Prophet Taha, Khayrul Khalqi wa Ahlaha. One of the Qasidas we recite often. Sallallahu ala Taha. Yes, the beautiful, the most sweetest of the creation of Allah, Taha, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam. And so visit to Masjid Kuba, very important. 
also, the 15th point I want to mention is fulfilling the needs of your Muslim brethren, whatever the needs are. Someone is in need of something, you take care of it. Sayyidina Imam Al Hassan Al Basri, Rajallahu Anhu, the Imam of the Tabi'een. So you have the generation of the Sahabas in the time of the Prophet. The next generation is called the Tabi'een, the followers. And his title is Imam Al Tabi'een. Sayyidina Hassan Al Basri, this great Sufi master, that all our spiritual lineage comes through him. He said, going to fulfill the need of your Muslim brethren is better for you than performing Hajj after Hajj after Hajj. For, first of all, the first one, compulsory. You have to do that. But then the subsequent ones, he's saying that rather than going and do the Nafil Hajj, you fulfill the needs of your Muslim brethren, your Muslim brother, your Muslim sister, someone, a Muslim in need, a believer in need that you would get the rewards of Hajj. He said, going to fulfill the need of a Muslim brother is more beloved to me than the Hajj, or performing Hajj after Hajj in this way. So this is an important uh, concept that we should be mindful of. And inshallah, we'll see something more uh, about this because it's a beautiful point that we should all be, be careful to implement in our lives. The final point I want to mention today, uh, briefly, and then we'll talk more about it, inshallah, with the tawfiq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is to be good, to be obedient and kind to your parents. To show ihsan to your parents. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran, وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ ihsana. The Prophet والسلام, commanded one of his companions to be good to his mother. He said, if you do so, you are a Hajj pilgrim performing, and a person performing Hajj and performing Umrah, and a person striving for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Mujahid, Fi Sabilillah. You get rewards of all of that, Hajj and Umrah, and to be like a Mujahid, when you are good to your parents, kind to your parents. Gentle and merciful to your parents. In other words, when you show ihsan to your parents, they should be mindful of. You get rewards of hajj and more. So these are a few of the points I want to mention. The, the last few points we, we dealt with in, in brief. Inshallah, we pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us tawfiq to explain it more so you can implement it in your lives more fully. But start doing it now. Inshallah, all of these points. Try to write them down, listen to the lecture again, uh, make some notes, and implement it in your life. And then share it with others. Share it with us. Share the link of the lecture uh, with us of the program, the, the, the daily live stream broadcast program with others, so that they can benefit as well. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you for doing so. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and grant us tawfiq to do all of these things so that we can gain the great rewards of Hajj and Umrah and more. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and grant us the, the invitation, the da'wah, to go for Hajj and to go for Umrah and to visit Masjid, Masjid, Masjid Haram, to visit the Kaaba, to visit Masjid Nabawi, to visit the Prophet Wasallam, which is the greatest visit we can ever do in our entire existence to visit the Prophet Wasallam, because he is the greatest of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us like that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase us in tawfiq and kubul and ziyada. Ameen, ameen, ameen. Wa sallallahu ta'ala ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in wa akhi da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu.
Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim and welcome once again and uh, Dhul Hijjah Mubarak to each and every one of you on this uh, second day of the blessed sacred month of Dhul Hijjah uh, we hope you are enjoying the wonderful blessings of this month of Dhul Hijjah once again, we uh, had the, uh, uh, the text on the screen and notice um, wherever you are, whichever country you're in or city, uh, when Maghrib time comes in, you break your fast for those who are fasting. Uh, and and we, we did the same thing here at, at the Islamic Forum, inshallah. So do remember that. Uh, while the program is going on and if Maghrib time comes in where you are then you go ahead and break your fast inshallah uh, because we have uh, so many people from different places different countries and so on different time zones so the Maghrib time is different and we, we just want to remind you to do so inshallah I hope you enjoyed your second day of fasting today. Yesterday, Sunday was the first day. Today, Monday, the second day, inshallah. Tonight, the third night. Uh, these are really great, blessed days of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The days of Allah, the days of mercy, the best days of the year, the most blessed days of the year. Uh, the greatest day of the year is part of this uh, period of time. Uh, Yawm Arafah and many are the best of deeds that uh, you, you believers are able to do <coughs> in these times the Hajj uh, performing Hajj to Baytullah uh, performing uh, Umrah and so on this is the time of the year when the largest number of believers are doing that are going to Masjid al-Haram, Masjid uh, al-Nabawi and so on, inshallah. Uh, then the, the, all the days are special and there are some that, are, that has additional blessings and benefits. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that on the days of sacrifice, which refers to Yawm al-Nahar, uh, Ayyam al-Tashriq, uh, from the 10th of the Hijjah to the 13th of the Hijjah, these are the days on, uh, on which you, c you can do your Udhiyah or Qurbani or the sacrifice for Eid al-Adha and for Hajj, for those who are going for Hajj. Um, so the Prophet ﷺ says that the best deed you can do, the deed that's, that's loved by Allah SWT more than anything else, it is the Qurbani, the sacrifice on these days. Uh, so do remember that uh, so you can do the sacrifice inshallah and if you would like to do your sacrifice with the Islamic Forum we have the IFC Qurbani program we've sent out the emails with the cost and details inshallah so uh, if you haven't received uh, the information please send us an email ifcinfo@gmail.com so that uh, you can, uh, we'll send you that information as well, uh, inshallah. Uh, and if you would like to, uh, to join the IFC Qurbani program, meaning to do Qurbani with Islam Forum or through Islam Forum, then send us an email and the staff will get back to you with the details, inshallah. Uh, there are many brothers and sisters that have already done so, but we want to remind you of the importance of doing this so you can try to do this inshallah the qurbani for this year and as we mentioned before the first nine days today is the second day of fasting first nine days you should try to fast if possible uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for you uh, to fast these most blessed days inshallah we also want to remind you of among the the greatest of the good deeds you can do is in fact to spend in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this time, in these blessed days. And so the, the 10 days of Dhul Hijjah, 
that you can do in fact uh, spending in the world of spantala uh, the information is on the website you can go to the samphone website to the button which says uh, the best days donation for the best days the best 10 days click on that button and make a donation for 10 days you need to donate 10 days in this month of the hijjah uh, for uh, based on the hadith of the prophet mamin ayyamin al amalu salihu fiha ahabu ila allah min hadhihi al ayyam we want to make dua for all uh, our donors uh, those who donated today yesterday and before and especially those who've responded to the, to the appeal for the uh, automated donation for the 10 blessed days or the best days of the year. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them great blessings for the donation. Bless all our donors, enrich them many more times and increase their risk. Uh, bless them, bless your family, bless your loved ones because of their donation uh, to the Islamic Forum of Canada. We also want to make special uh, Dua for the sponsors of the Iftar program. So now in the special days of Dhul Hijjah because of the very strong recommendation to fast, uh, we are doing the Iftar program. Before we were doing the dinner program. So this is now included, the blessings are increased with Iftar and dinner. Uh, so we want to thank all those families and make Dua for them, all those who have uh, committed to sponsoring the Iftar program in this month of Dhul Hijjah. Uh, today, uh, Sidi Fazl Saifullah and the Saifullah family are sponsoring the Iftar dinner program. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them. We also want to make special dua for Sidi Fazl's father, Sidi Noor Saifullah, who is ill uh, in hospital. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him shifa and taman, uh, a full and speedy recovery from his illness. Uh, as we make dua for each one of every one of you, all, all your family members and loved ones that are ill, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them shifa. There are several requests for dua. We also want to include that, including Brother Muhammad Yaqub from Pakistan, Sis Abid and Sis Shamaila from Manchester, United Kingdom. Uh, Sis Nafiz and Nabi from uh, Princess Tongue in Trinidad, in the West Indies, and for, for her children. Uh, I think her son who is writing CXA exam, may Allah subhanahu wa grant him success. Sister Razia Khan requesting dua for uh, Shifa for Sister Yasmin. Brother Ahsan Shabi from Italy, we make dua for him. Uh, Sister Ruxana Begum and family from Brampton, we want to make dua for him, inshallah. I also want to include dua for this famous uh, personality from India uh, who passed away. Uh, popularly known as uh, Dilip Kumar, His, uh, he was a Muslim, his uh, legal proper name is Yusuf Sarwar Khan, uh, who passed away at the age close to 100, 99 years of age, born in 1921-1922 and passed away a few days ago. Uh, we make dua for him. Uh, he was an outstanding individual. Uh, the more you learn about him, uh, things, things which were not known by many people. Uh, he was uh, con he's considered the greatest actor uh, from India, uh, and uh, but our our focus or concern uh, or appreciation is for his uh, Islamic uh, activities. He. Uh, always would engage in uh, charity programs uh, for Muslims, to help Muslims. We, we, we mentioned uh, or yesterday about his charity program for Bosnian Muslims when Bosnia, the Serbs were killing Muslims in Bosnia and they were displaced and they had to run to different countries for their lives and so on. And he was actively involved in doing fundraising, attending fundraising programs, speaking, and because of him, you know, people are donating or donated a lot of money. Uh, and many other uh, char Muslim charitable causes. Uh, he, he went uh, for his Umrah uh, to Mecca, Vis Majl Haram, Masjid Nabawi, uh, which is an indication of Iman, uh, someone who would make the sacrifice 
to go and visit the Prophet Sallallahu uh, Alaihi to visit Masjid al-Haram, to visit the Kaaba and so on. It shows uh, that they have Iman. Um, sometimes we don't know this because we, we, we would, we're just familiar to what's in the media because he was uh, the most famous actor for so many decades. Uh, so you would only know about those things. But then the private life of the person, sometimes you don't know. Uh, and now a lot of information is coming out. And there are many books that are written about him uh, and so on. Some of them is close friends, close associates, uh, you know, talked about his Islam. And so we remember him. Uh, there are people who make mistakes, yes. Every, we all make mistakes. And we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. But the sunnah is that when a Muslim, a believer passes away, you remember their good qualities. Remember their good qualities. You know, there are short video clips of him, like for example, facing in Medina. And you can see, on the, you can see him on the outskirts of the masjid. Uh, he's walking barefoot. He doesn't wear any shoes. And this is from the adab of visiting Medina. Uh, I, I remember once also uh, the, 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 the Prime Minister of uh, Pakistan, uh, Imran Khan, when he visited Medina, the same thing he did. He, he did not walk with his shoes uh, on the outskirts of the masjid that's on in the streets, walk barefoot. Uh, because the adab, uh, especially among Ahlul Tasawf, is that this place, Medina, is so blessed. The Prophet walked in this place, so you want to respect it. You want to respect Medina in this way. And so it was good to see him with this adab, uh, inshallah. So we want to include him in dua. And I wanted to make uh, these brief comments about him, uh, about his, uh, the Islamic side of his life, uh, how he you know, was mindful about uh, his religion, and the fact that he uh, went to visit uh, Mecca, Medina to perform Umrah and so on. It's a good indication because many people, especially if they're wealthy and famous and so on, they don't want to go there. Like many Muslims wouldn't do that. There's some Allah SWT bless them, they, they want to go all the time. Every year they go for Hajj and so on. But many wealthy Muslims don't want to hear anything about visiting Mecca and Medina and performing Hajj and Umrah and so on. So when someone like this can do it, it we, we appreciate it. We appreciate it because it can be an insp inspiration for other believers, other Muslims as well. So include him in dua also. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive him and have mercy in him and bless him with Jannah. I also want to welcome uh, everyone in the chat. At the top of the chat, there are important messages from the admin staff. Please go through those messages. Uh, so you can respond accordingly, inshallah, including uh, the Qurbani program. You email us uh, to join the Qurbani program, and the staff will give you the details. And then also uh, sponsoring the Iftar program, if you'd like to do so in these most blessed days of the year, send us an email and we'll, the staff will give you more information, inshallah. There, the books from Amazon.com, uh, including um, one that we received recently, the uh, al Wird al Am, the translation commentary. al Wird al Am, the general litany. So, this is the Wird al Am, the dhikr that you have to do in the morning and the evening, twice a day, every day. And it, uh, I usually tell brothers and sisters and students and Marines, if you have more time, do it more often. It has great blessings for you. So, this is a wonderful book, an essential book for each Muslim home. Uh, for your library. Uh, so you can have it there, you can read through it. The translation, the commentary, the explanation, the virtues of al wird al -Am. So you're reciting it every day. You should have this book uh, that has the dhikr and also the translation, transliteration, and explanation and, and the virtues of each item of the dhikr that, that's there. So uh, you can be mindful about it to on some more. So this book is available from Amazon.com. It's a wonderful Eid gift for Eid al-Adha that you can uh, order from Amazon and give to your loved ones, inshallah. One of the uh, three books that are available uh, from Amazon.com at this point in time, inshallah.
So the, the link is of the, the, the different Eid gifts, it's on at the, in the chat, at the top of the chat, inshallah. We want to welcome Siti Riham Islam uh, from New York City in the United States. Welcome Siti Riham. Thanks for joining us. May Allah bless you. As you wishing, Siti Riham wishing Zul Hijja Mubarak greetings to Sayyidina Sheikh and the admin staff. Alhamdulillah. And Siti Riham says, Thank you for the amazing live stream broadcast. It is really beneficial, and we all can't express our gratitude through words. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you, Sayyidina Sheikh Faisal, and the admin staff. Alhamdulillah. Shukran, may Allah bless you as well, Siti Riham from America. Siti Shamir, Siti Samir, Siti Shabir, Siti Amir, Siti Shazi, Siti Sadiqa, Siti Alima, all from Queens, New York, in the United States. Welcome to all of you. Alhamdulillah. Uh, and, and once again, uh, do remember to let uh, as many people you know, Muslims, about the program they can join us, uh, especially in these blessed days that they can be reminded of the things to do, all the good deeds that you can do in these blessed days, inshallah. Siti Lazina Kharmular uh, from Pinal in Trinidad in West Indies, welcome. Sister Zina Tulbeg and family from Brampton, welcome. Siti Sabiha Qadir, Siti Kamran. And Sarah from Columbus, Ohio, wishing everyone Dhul Hijja Mubarak greetings. Alhamdulillah. You should do this throughout the month every day. You, you do the greetings, Dhul Hijja Mubarak greetings in the chat uh, so that you can get more blessings. Inshallah, wish everyone like this and spread the, spread the good word. Sister Zairul and family from Toronto, wishing everyone Dhul Hijja Mubarak greetings. Uh, Quran project completed. Uh, up to chapter 50, uh, which, is, which is very good, alhamdulillah. So uh, once again, Sister Zairul, you should try to spend some more time with Quran recitation now. Like tonight and tomorrow, uh, spend a few hours reciting Quran uh, so that you can get closer to the khatam, inshallah, like you do your khatam. Uh, within these 10 days, the, the blessed days, inshallah. And for all of you, try to do the same thing. Do, you know, do spend more time reciting the Quran uh, so you can push ahead quickly to be able to do your khatam uh, in uh, these 10 days, inshallah. So, you're, uh, Sister Zayl, you're up to uh, chapter 50, which is very good. I mean, there are 114 chapters, but you've done all the, the long chapters already. You've done. You know, so uh, you're towards the end. Inshallah, you can try to push yourself and do it as quick as possible. Uh, we welcome also uh, Auntie Betty Amina and Dean from Toronto reciting a thousand salawat today. Sister Hafiza Hamid Ali, Brother Abbas Ali from Pinal in Trinidad and West Indies, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Sister Halima, Siti Halima Ali uh, from Brampton, welcome Siti Halima. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Brother Keith McDonald, this is Ola Brother Juan from Toronto. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. Uh, City Sharon Eden and family from Chattamago on the east coast of Demerara in Guyana, South America. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Brother Mohammed Ibra <coughs> Ibrahim, Sister Bibi Ibrahim and family from Pembroke Pines in Florida. Uh, welcome. Brother Brahm, Sister Rani, and says, Grateful Sheikh Faisal for the blessed programs. Salawat. Uh, 200 salawat today for a total of 37,000 salawat. Quran up to chapter 37, Surah Safat. Very good, Alhamdulillah. So we can try to recite, uh, uh, you know, you spend a few hours reciting tonight, tomorrow, uh, inshallah, that you can uh, move ahead. It's still possible to finish your khatam in the 10 days, inshallah. So try to spend as much time as, as possible reciting Quran. We welcome also Sister Bibi Farida, Babs and Umar from Pembroke Pines in Florida, the United States. Welcome, and it says, uh, we're grateful to uh, Sheikh Fais for the, for the special lectures for the new month of Dhul Hijjah. Alhamdulillah. So we, we have uh, several different themes that we are doing now uh, relating to Dhul Hijjah. Uh, we, we are doing a theme on the actions which will grant you the rewards of Jannah. We are doing another theme on the virtues of Qurbani. We are doing another theme on the virtues of Dhul Hijjah, the action month itself, and so on. 
So the, the, these are very uh, important uh, lectures for you to listen to. And uh, if you've missed them, go back uh, to the YouTube channel like during the day you have some time uh, and, and look at the, the recorded uh, programs. Uh, for even from before the Hijjid that we when you started the series, so you can get all listen to all the lectures, inshallah. Even if you've attended the program, I would like a reminder you have some time during the day, you can listen to the program uh, or, or tune into our YouTube uh, channel all day, all night. Uh, we have different programs, including lectures and Quran recitation and dhikr and dua and, and so on, qasidas and so like that, inshallah. We also want to welcome Sis Abid and Sis Shamayla from Manchester, United Kingdom. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we said five Jews of the Quran today and 25,000 salawat. Sis Halim Ali and family from Markham, welcome. And says, I'm grateful for this very special informative program on a daily basis. Thanks to Sheikh Faisal and the admin staff. May Allah bless them, inshallah. Uh, Sister Ulla Rahman and family from Toronto. Sister Rose from Brampton. Uh, Siti Arifa Mohammed from New York, United States. Sister Razia. Brother Tariq Feroz from Scarborough. Welcome. Uh, Siti Bibi and Sanali. Sister Nazrun Baksh from Pigeon Island, east coast of Dermarani, Guyana, South America. Brother Muhammad Yaqub and family from the city of Chelab in Pakistan. Welcome all the way from Pakistan. We make do for you and your entire family, your brother and everyone else as you requested in dua, inshallah. Uh, Sidi Hasib and Siti Asi and family from Brampton, welcome to all of you. Alhamdulillah. Sidi uh, Ashan. Bacchus and Siti Felicia from Quarantine Borbis in Guyana, South America. Welcome. Uh, Sister uh, Brenda Williams from Harlem, New York. Welcome, Sister Brenda Williams. Wishing uh, Dhul Hijab Mubar greetings to everyone. And grateful to Sheikh Faisal for the ongoing, uh, his ongoing un unselfish or selfless sharing of knowledge. It continues to assist me in my spiritual journey. Alhamdulillah, salawat today. Uh, 800 salawat for a total of 189,000 salawat. And the Quran projects, as the brand says, up to chapter 3, verse 174. Very good, alhamdulillah. And we want to thank Sister Brenda Williams for her uh, regular and generous donations to the Islamic Forum. May Allah SWT bless her, enrich her many, many more times, and grant her barakah and blessing in our wealth. Sister Nafiza <coughs> Nabi from Princess Sung in Trinidad. Uh, we welcome you, thanks, and we make du'as requested, inshallah, for your children who are writing a CXC exam, inshallah. May Allah grant them success. Sister Bibi Faridir Chan, Brother Sama Chan from Miami, Florida, United States. Uh, grateful for the lectures on the virtues and significance of Qurbani Quran Project, completed up chapter 16. Salawat Project, 1200 Salawat, for a total of 43,000 Salawat. Very good, alhamdulillah. See the first Saifullah and the Saifullah family, welcome. Uh, thanks for joining us. And uh, Salwar Project 600 Salawat today. And thanks for sponsoring the Iftar program today. May Allah bless you and your entire family and grant Shifa to your dad, Siti Noor. Sister Bibi Zamino Razak from Cotton Tree Village, West Coast, Barbies in Guyana, South America, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Sister Bibi Afroz Bimson from uh, Orlando, Florida, United States. Welcome. And Sister Bibi Afroz says, thanks for very informative sessions. May Allah bless Sheikh Faisal and his staff. With Jannah. Ameen. Ameen. And to you as well. Sister Shakila Majid from Florida, United States. Welcome. Salawat today, 500 for a total of 93,000 salawat. Alhamdulillah. Sister Razia uh, Khan um, requesting dua for Sister Yasmin from Bowmanville. Dua for her Shifa. Inshallah, we make special offer Shifa for Sis Yasmin. And Sis Razia, please con convey our salams to her, Sis Yasmin. Encourage her to watch the program, Inshallah. Brother Ahsan Shabir and family from Italy, welcome all the way from Italy, Brother Ahsan Shabir. We make dua for his requested. Sister Bibi Jamila Wahab from Toronto, 
uh, welcome and a Quran project after chapter 3 Salawat project 200 Salawat today for a total of 29,000 Salawat. See the Afraz, Rahmat and family from Penal in Trinidad and West Indies, welcome. Thanks for joining us. May Allah SWT bless you. Sister Karima Ali and family from Buffalo, New York in the United States, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Sidi Malana Tariq Al Faisal, Sidi Karina Al Faisal from QREP in Trinidad in West Indies, uh, welcome. Sidi Rahim, Sidi Rihanna, Sidi Bibi, and family from Presal, Halak and Trinidad in the West Indies, welcome. Sister Halima Khan and family, welcome. Uh, wishing Dhul Hijjah Mubarak greetings to everyone. Salawat, a thousand salawat today for a total of uh, 9,200 salawat. Quran Project, Surah Al Baqarah, up to ayah number 188. And thanks for this blessed program. Ameen. Sister Farida Ahmad and family, welcome. And thanks to Sheikh Faisal for the beautiful lecture for this month. And my sister, my brother, my nieces are here. City Malik, City Faz, City Aliyah, City Asia from AFA, Florida. Welcome to all of you. Uh, my dad is here, Al Haj Imam Abdul Hamid Abu Razak. I'm here from AFA, Florida. Welcome. Alhamdulillah. Uh, City Sophia Pessoa from Miramar, Florida. Uh, welcome. Thanks for joining us, inshallah. May Allah bless you. Siti uh, Ali Khan and family from Ottawa, uh, welcome. And says, grateful, uh, so grateful that we were able to do our Eid Salah for Eid al Adha in the mosque. Alhamdulillah. We also want to welcome uh, Sister Ruxana Begum and family from Brampton. Sister says, Ruxan says, Quran project recited from Surat Al Hajj to Surat Al Noor. Alhamdulillah. So you can try to recite more, spend more time reciting Quran in these 10 days. So you can do your khatam in the 10 days, inshallah. Sidi Munawar and family from Brampton, welcome Sidi Munawar and Quran project. I recited six pages of the Quran today up to Surat Al Kahf and 200 salawat. Alhamdulillah. Sidi Faisal Tahir uh, uh, from Brampton. Welcome, Sidi Faisal Tahir, requesting dua for himself and family in these blessed days. And Quran project completed up to Jews number 26. Alhamdulillah. So you, know, you can try to recite more of Quran uh, tomorrow so you can finish your khatam in the 10 days of the Hijjah, inshallah. Siti Anisa Khan and family from Ottawa, welcome. Make the offer is requested, inshallah. This is Halima Khan for the, says for the Dhikr project, recited the Weird Alarm twice today. Alhamdulillah, excellent. And thanks for this feedback. And we want to encourage you to include in your feedback your recitation of the Weird Alarm, how many times you've recited it uh, for that day, inshallah. Uh, Sister Shahanaz, Shahnaz from Markham, wishing Dhul Hijjah Mubarak greetings to everyone. Make the offer in your family, inshallah. Alhamdulillah, these are the names that we have in the chat that we want to make the offer all of them. All the requests for dua, all the niya you mentioned, or, or all our donors. Uh, especially those that have responded to the appeal for the automated donation for the blessed days of the year, the 10 blessed days of the year, uh, the sponsors of our iftar program, all the families that are sponsoring the iftar program in this month of the Hijjah. Today, see the Fazal and the uh, Saifullah family, may Allah bless them for doing so. Uh, yesterday, we had uh, Sidi Hussein, Sidi Faisal, Tahir, and son sponsoring iftar, may Allah bless them. Uh, for doing so, inshallah. We want to also welcome everyone that uh, has come out today to the masjid for the iftar program. May Allah bless them for doing so, uh, inshallah. So kindly raise your hands and join me in dua <coughs> as you make dua for all of that niyyah. Allahumma ameen. Rabbana taqabal minna. Rabbana bisir al-fatiha. Bismillahi rahmani rahim Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Maliki Yawmiddin, 
إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين 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 جزا الله عنا سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ما هو أهله جزا الله عنا سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ما هو أهله جزا الله عنا سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ما هو أهله آمين 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 we, once again, we thank you for joining us today for a program. Please remember to tell others, family members, relatives, friends, and other Muslims you know uh, about the daily broadcast starting at 7 p.m. Toronto time, uh, the weekly Juma broadcast at 1 p.m. inshallah. Uh, on the day of Arafat, we have special Arafat broadcast, and on the day of Eid, we have special. Uh, broadcast for Eid al-Adha. May Allah bless each and every one of you. May Allah keep you always in shade of His mercy. Until we meet again, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu.